Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Bridge Builders of Diversity, where we are bridging the gap between the typical community and the disability community. And today we're going to talk about cerebral palsy. But before we get started, I'm Sherry. I'm a mother of a child with Down syndrome, and this is Roberta, and she is a special educator. I am, and I'm going to bring you, because I'm an educator, I'm going to bring you the definition of cerebral palsy. And this is the definition from the Center for Disease Control. So cerebral palsy or CP, so we're going to use those terms interchangingly, um, is a group of disorders that affect a person's ability to move, maintain balance and posture. CP is the most common motor disability in childhood. Cerebral means having to do with the brain and palsy means weakness or problems with using muscles. CP is caused by abnormal brain development or damage to the developing brain that affects a person's ability to control their muscles. And the signs and symptoms of CP vary from person to person. A person with severe CP might need to use special equipment to be able to walk or might not be able to walk at all and might need lifelong care. A person with mild CP, on the other hand, might walk a little awkwardly, but might, need any, might not need any special help. CP does not get worse over time, though the exact symptoms can change over a person's lifetime. There are different types of CP and doctors classify them according to the main type of movement disorder involved. So depending on which areas of the brain are affected, one or more of the following movement disorders can occur. They can have spasticity, which is stiff muscles. They can have dyskinesia, which is uncontrollable movements, or ataxia, which is poor balance and coordination. And there are four main types of CP. And the most common type of CP is spastic CP. This affects about 80% of the people with cerebral palsy. People with spastic CP have increased muscle tone, which means their muscles are stiff. And as a result, their movements can be awkward. Spastic CP usually is described by what part of the body is affected. Right. There's dyskinetic cerebral palsy, also called, called I'm going to kill this word, athetoid or choreoathetoid and, or, and or dystonic cerebral palsies. So people with dyskinetic CP have problems controlling the movements of their hands, arms, feet, and legs. This makes it difficult for them to sit to walk, or to walk. The movements are uncontrollable and can be slow and writhing or rapid and jerky. Sometimes the face and tongue are affected and the person has a hard time sucking, swallowing, and talking. A person with dyskinetic CP has muscle tone that can change, varying from too tight to too loose. And not only from day to day, but throughout a single day, these, their abilities can change. And the next one is ataxic cerebral palsy. And people with ataxic CP have problems with balance and coordination. They might be unsteady when they walk. They might have a hard time with quick movements or movements that need a lot of control, like writing. They might have a hard time controlling their hands or arms when they reach for something. There's also mixed cerebral palsy. And some people have symptoms of more than one type. That's why they call it mixed. The most common type of mixed CP is spastic dyskin dyskinetic. Um, and so what they would, what would happen is that they would have spastic, so really hypertonal, really tight, tight muscles, and then difficulty coordinating those muscles. Um, and this brings me to my personal connection, which is when I was in college, there was a woman that I knew, and most people at, at first glance, at first thing meeting her, thought she was flaky or drunk all the time. And when I got to know her, I found out that this appearance was because she had CP. Now she had a mild form, but she was still unable to drive because she was unable to coordinate the muscles in her feet to operate the pedals in a car. So really important lesson learned there. 
right? That's why one of the main reasons why we make these videos is so we can create an understanding of the disability community and the public so people understand these things. You're right. It's so important to see people through a lens of understanding and respect. And that's our mission here at Bridge Builders of Diversity. We're building bridges of understanding between the typical community and our disabled friends. That's Absolutely. Great. And if you like our content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Smash all those buttons. Help us get out into the YouTube universe. You can check out our um, TED Talk as well. I'll put the link below, and I will find a spot in the video to, that you can click on it to, to put it in. Great. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Until next time, drop us a comment. Let okay. us know if you want to hear about something else. Absolutely. Until Thank you. Then, peace. Thank you. Appreciate you guys.